So this is about the hundredth time that I've recorded this talk. I've sat here, I've sat here and recorded it. I've stood against that wall and recorded it. Uh, and every time something has gone just a little bit astray. Uh, so I'm hoping this will be the last time, but I'm actually really grateful for that opportunity because maybe that's the very nature of isolated talks right now. We're in our homes and delivery of these things is difficult. We're in our homes and we're by ourselves and we're speaking to cameras. We might even be in our homes and speaking to other people through our screens, but there is those moments of not being as connected uh, to, to the people that we'd like to be connected to. So hopefully through this talk, you get a demonstration, a, a, a point of view shared that you may not have considered before. Um, and even if we're not able to be there physically together, then hopefully we're at least able to uh, be connected by a thought. So the thought that I'd like to share today is the thought that love sells. Now that feels like a controversial thing to say. So let me explain. And let me explain why it's a very personal experience too. So when I was 15 years old, I read my first marketing book. It was a book by the then CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi. It was called Love Marks. Love Marks opened my eyes to a career and a, a opportunity for people to engage in a career of marketing, of advertising, in which we could create uh, emotions in, in, in other people. We could create a sense of genuine connection. And that was a real genuine possibility. A few years later, I found out what it was like to work in something you don't love. I went into a career for the sake of it, uh, not even for the sake of it, for the sake of the money. Uh, I was an SAP consultant. Within six months, I decided, well, it became very apparent that that wasn't going to be the place where I felt satisfied and felt like I could do my best place of work. So I left and uh, became a marketer, something I knew that I kind of always loved ever from ever since reading that book. I haven't looked back since. In the eight years or so that I've been a marketer, I've had the opportunity to meet thousands of people and reach thousands, millions more even. And it's in that time that I've always come to realize that one of the things that we all want as human beings is that sense of connection, that genuine feeling of it being valued, that feeling that whatever it is, our problems, they can be solved by people and, and marketing done well. All that is, is the communication of a problem solved. I've called this talk Love Sells, and I appreciate that, as I say, that's a slightly controversial statement. So let me explain why. And I'm gonna explain why using three stages of this talk. The first is definitions, the second is examples, and the final bit is how you can implement this in your business. So, so let's start off with definitions. I define love in the same way as everyone else defines love, I think. It's a warm, fuzzy feeling that hopefully most of us know. It's that opportunity to feel a connection. As an input, that is a series of behaviours and actions. It's being authentic to yourself, it's being vulnerable, it's being trusting, it's being selfless, it's uh, being caring. I don't necessarily in this context imply intimacy in the same way as you may feel love for a, a partner but certainly there's a selflessness involved in in this in this talk the difference between love and passion or or authenticity or, or whatever those words that i just mentioned is is that love is the culmination of all these things into something that is greater than the sum of its parts it's also something which is felt on a deep visceral level it's something which you can't explain you just feel it and you don't know why but you do and you know what you love it you absolutely love it so that's love in my opinion and then you've got selling now i appreciate that most people in their minds will have an idea of what selling is and and you know the the one that comes to mind is a financial transaction between two people a person and a company uh, that results in some sort of monetary exchange there is, of course, that. But then there's also selling people on an idea. There's selling people uh, to people again once they've already bought from you. There's all these different types of selling. And ultimately, if you sell with love, it doesn't ever feel like a sales process at all. People just acknowledge that you are engaging in an act for their benefit and their benefit only. 
And yes, of course, there might be some financial exchange, but you've already persuaded them of your value through your selflessness, through your authenticity and your vulnerability, through acting with love. So that's what the rest of this talk is going to be about. Um, so we've spoken about some definitions. Let's speak about some examples. I'm going to speak about it in a couple of ways. The first is through the example of someone who's injected love throughout the creation of their process, through, throughout the creation of their product, which has led to me falling in love with their products and, you know, an awful lot of other people. So the example that I'd like to give on the product side is painter jackets. Painter jackets are a company that are based in Wales. They produce four batches of uh, chore jackets, which is a specific style of jacket uh, each year. They produce these in a limited run. The story behind painter jackets is that uh, Hugh and Becky, the two young founders of painter jackets, had an idea. And that idea, very simply, was that we have lost connection with the clothes that we wear. It's so easy just to buy some fast fashion brand and, and take it home and then wear it once, put it in the wash, it shrinks, and then you're like, nah, going out. It's going out, don't fit me anymore. I don't have any attachment, uh, attachment to, to this garment. So Hugh and, Becky, Hugh and Becky sought to create a reconnection with their product, with fashion. They told a story on how they do this. So how does this manifest itself? Well, the first thing you'll notice about painter jackets is that they only sell four batches per year. So the likely chances are that you're going to interact with painter in a period where they are not selling their jackets presently. So what they do at this stage is that they tell you their story. They say that Hugh was working in a factory and in his spare time he was building or making these jackets for himself in a slim fit chore jacket style. They sell you on that story and, and the reason why they do what they do now is to enable you to reconnect with, with their product, with clothes in general. They still sell you on the story through email marketing, through their incredible Instagram page, and they do it again and again and again to the point where they get you to fever pitch when they actually release their jackets. Now, I'm a painter jackets customer. They only sell four times a year, as I say, and their last batch sold out in 82 seconds. When I received my painter jacket through the post, I didn't feel like I was just getting a jacket. I felt like I was gonna get a story that I could wear, a story that I loved. The way that they continue to tell their story is that from the point of me ordering, they took me through the process of how they make their products. They showed you the buttons being made, they showed you the garment being dyed, they showed you uh, the the parcels being packed and uh and uh they they mention their manufacturer by name all these are small little hints that are showing that becky and hugh love their product and love what they do the output of this is that i love it too and ultimately i put hands in my pocket to pay for this product the second example is john lewis this is a cultural example of someone inputting love and getting output of uh, loyalty, but then also financial reward. So John Lewis very famously make their staff partners. What this does is it gives a communal sense of uh, ownership over the brand. When you walk into a John Lewis store, you're not only taking the time to buy a product, you're also buying into the experience of being in the John Lewis store. You're buying into a story. You're walking through something which people are proud to be part of. People wouldn't be proud to work in John Lewis if John Lewis hadn't first showed a, 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 an act of selflessness and caringness. Caringness? I don't even know if that's a word. For their community, for their staff. With that in mind, those are both acts of love. In return, their staff return the love to John Lewis and in, uh, customers return it back to both of those organizations through uh, and people through purchasing more. There's a reason why John Lewis survives on the high street, even with its present day struggles, because it stands out from the marketplace and that's down to the employees as much as anything else. Thirdly, I'll speak about my own example. So I run an organization called the Marketing Meetup. 
we're a community and for the first two years of the organization we pretty much broke even but everything we did was based around the customer it was based around the community and engaging a sense of community with the wonderful people who chose to be part of the marketing meetup everything we did and everything we do is for their benefit had we not spent the first two years purely chasing uh, helping these people on such an incredible basis taking the time to show our love and appreciation for the community there's no way we'd be in the place where we are today this continues to this day so it wasn't two years exclusive but now we remain a profitable business which is the point about this talk as well that love can sell so um as a point here it's just like <laughs> sometimes you've got to make these bets on love to be able to take the business to the next level and it may not pay off the next day finally of course we're speaking about selling so i'll give an example which is the agencies throughout the land and genie goals is a fine example of doing this where their representatives don't sell to people if they don't think they're going to be a good fit now that's something that i think is becoming increasingly popular in the marketplace and something we, should, we all should be doing but again this is an example of selflessness uh, in a place where there could be a financial gain in the short term, but in the long term, nobody wins. Here, that, that uh, selflessness in the short term inevitably or very, very often leads to a return in the longer term where people come back and say, you know what, I wasn't right for you six years ago. You told me that. So today I'm going to come back because I am right for you. And in those moments, they become the best clients ever. The thing that each of these sets of individuals have, or these individual companies have in common, is that throughout all of these, they have shown acts of love uh, throughout their processes, whether it's how they treat their people, how they build their products, uh, how the company is built in the first place, or even in the sales process. And inevitably what this leads to is far stronger, happier relationships with people who, who remain in the long term. Now, I think it is important to address at this point that each of these are long term relationships. And of course, there are functional elements of purchasing and stuff like that, where you know what? A quick sale, that's absolutely fine. If you go to Amazon, you don't always need to go for the brand name product. You might just buy 24 batteries from an unknown brand because that's what you need in that moment. And that's OK. But if you're looking to build these long term relationships, there is an opportunity and there are companies out there doing this. So, how do you go about achieving and implementing love in your business? Well, three steps, I think. The first is to acknowledge that the person on the other side of your interactions is indeed a human being. On a very basic level, human beings want to be socially accepted, they want to be safe, they want to be well fed. Uh, on a secondary level, they want to be well paid, but fundamentally, they want to feel safe, loved, cared for. So, ultimately, we have to acknowledge that it's our job as marketers, as business people, to take the time to show that we love these people and in return, we inevitably get it back. Or even if we don't, that's also okay. Um, the second thing to acknowledge is that there are opportunities to show love in everything we do. And at this point, you might be saying, okay, I am working for a funeral parlor or an insurance company. And you know what? Love is just not right for us. And while I do understand your argument, I just don't think it's true. Love doesn't have to be saying, I love you, but it could be showing absolute concern for the person in front of you, beyond a level which is just like, what's the payout that I'm going to get? Rory Sutherland calls this sweating the small stuff. He says that if you take a moment to appreciate the little things, those little moments of magic, you have no idea where it will take you to and the opportunities it will present. I would make some pointers here. I'd say that there's opportunities in the uh, greeting that you do in your emails, the sign off you do in your emails, the privacy policy on your website, how you interact with people on social media, the graphics that you use. Uh, the t how you speak to your customers on the phone, whether you're smiling or not, whether you send them a Christmas card, 
Um, all these opportunities to show that your customer that you truly are invested in them and ultimately you love them. So that's number two. Number three is another borrowed one. Uh, this is from a chap called Graham Robertson. He is the author of a book called Beloved Brands, which I'd, I'd really recommend that you check out. In this, Graham points to an anecdote where he had an executive who handed him a piece of work. Uh, Graham looked at it and said to the executive, do you love this? The executive kind of looked at him back and said, no, not really. So Graham gave it him back, sent him away and said, come back when you know that you love this project. And for me, that was a really, really great example of love in action. It was questioning the person who produced it. Not only do you love this, but are you maintaining your standards? Are you doing something that makes you happy? Now, this is easy to say and hard to apply on a day-to-day -day basis, but when you can, you're nailing it. I'd add a second part to this as well though, which is if you can't answer the question, do I love this with an honest yes, but you have to stay in that job, then the next best or even the best thing to do is ask, will the customer love this? If this is true, you know, and, and the customer will love something, then you're probably onto a winner. So those are three ways to integrate love into your business. Acknowledge that someone, the other side of your interaction as a human being, look for those micro moments to insert love and <laughs> insert love. <laughs> and uh, finally, to uh, take the opportunity to ask yourself, will I or will my customer love this? Ultimately, I think love is... Uh, the ultimate superpower and everything that we should be aspiring to hit. Now, I'm very aware that there will be some people right now who will have listened to this talk and think it's another marketer crawling up his own arse, speaking about love uh, as if it's something that anybody else should give a crap about. It's okay to not agree that love is the answer. Personally, I think it is. But at the end of the day, it should also be an aspiration. Even if we can't hit love in everything we do, if we aim for love and hit passion, or if we hit, is much better than aiming for passion and just getting moderately adequate. So for me, I think asking that question, do I love this? Uh, is the human being the other side gonna like this? And what are those micro moments? These are all those opportunities to do something you truly love. Final thing. Um, so as marketers, like we ruin everything. Um, and I say that in the sense of, if I think about the word empathy, the word empathy uh, is a wonderful thing. The, the associated act of it, of truly looking to understand the human being in front of you is a beautiful thing that we should all be doing for one another. That being said, marketers clung to this term for the past two years and it's turned into nothing more than a buzzword. So my encouragement here would be actually to take the time to not just speak about love, but also to show it in your actions. Let's not use love as a marketing byword for the sake of it. Yes, let's use it as an inspiration, as something to aim for. I think it's if we aim to do that, then the industry will be a better place because we take the time to prioritize those who matter. We'll stop looking to ourselves and looking to others. We'll start doing things we're passionate about and, be, and as a result, we'll be more creative with it. And if that's the case, then I, I just think the world would be a slightly better place. So thanks for listening to my talk. I hope it was okay. This is take 500. So uh, you got to worry about the other 499 approaches. Um, thank you for taking the time. Cheers.